So hello again today with me. It's my final opinion review for the World Cup 2018. Yesterday, France Allez Les Bleus won the 2018 FIFA World Cup. It's actually been a tremendous, tremendous game. Um, and pretty much, as I say, in football, you're never going to know what's going to happen. Nobody predicted it'll be 4 2. Um, what a game it is! A uh, high scoring game. So, the last time we have we had this kind of high scoring game, I think, uh, was in 1966 when England beat West Germany 4 2 after extra time. Now, um, I'm not going to talk about the third place uh, too much because, you know, it's a game that had been uh, yeah, before yesterday. Is it Belgium won it 2 0. Um, goals from uh, I think Eden Hazard and Nuya Munaya. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name, but pretty much uh, Belgium uh, third place winners. Uh, England fourth place. Good, good, good uh, performance. But of course, each of the team knows that they wanted to play the game yesterday, which was the finals. Um, the game is pretty much uh, the most. I think the final of 2018 resembles the whole tournament itself. You have penalties, you have VAR decisions, controversy handballs, keeper mistakes, uh, superb goals, um, you know, for a final occasion. And nevertheless, you had uh, certainly you know, penalties. Uh, and of course, I think the whole atmosphere was just absolutely brilliant. This tournament, which, you know... Um, which Russia 2018, a lot of people back then was very skeptic, you know, can Russia really uh, be uh, hosting a successful World Cup without a lot of football, uh, you know, uh, culture, but it really seems that Russia 2018 is amongst the top, I think, the top five World Cups up there. I think this is the World Cup where you had uh, favourites crashing out, pretty much unpredictable, has been unpredictable throughout the whole, uh, you know, tournament um at only the final which i think a lot of people but uh a lot of people were you know hoping that croatia could win but also another plot twist but obviously the favorites were france in terms of the team sheet the team that nobody really talked about in the early stages of the fifa world cup uh, of the group stages everyone was criticizing france for you know struggling against team like australia uh teams like peru denmark and then Soon later, they started to really gear up against Argentina, against Uruguay. They win against Belgium, which was quite edgy, 1-0 game. And then finally, finally against Croatia, um, it was just their moment. And of course, Croatia, another team which I think deserve to be remembered as well. Of course, people will always remember at least the, the champions and the finalists because... Uh, these two these two teams will be really in the minds and hearts of you know our footballing world. Um, Croatia, a team that nobody nobody actually thought that could go on to the finals. You know we were talk we were talking about Brazil, we were talking about Germany, we were talking about Spain, Portugal, Messi, Ronaldo, all these stuff. Nobody kept an eye on Croatia and even of course for France. But you know France at least were a team of a favorite. Uh, won the World Cup before. But Croatia, nobody talked about them, and they went all the way, beating Argentina in the group stages, uh, have a nine points record, and then went all the way to win in three extra time, winning in penalties and after extra time, and pretty much the team that knocked out the hosts, knocked out England, knocked out Denmark. This is a team to be rectified, and of course for their nation, a victory is always so much more better, but silver medal finalists, you will be remembered. You will be remembered. I mean, nobody remembered third placing. Um, of course, uh, as for Belgium and England, good tournament, but I think um, for Croatia, you will be remembered, of course. Uh, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we'll be saying, you know, remember that one time where France won against Croatia? That, I mean, uh, you know. Um, that memory of them going all the way to the finals but of course let's talk about the final itself it was a very agey start um i think for the croatians and of course a first manzukic own goal which i thought 
have always been, um, you know, goals from set pieces. A lot of people are telling Griezmann did really dive, but you know, we're not really sure. I mean, from this angle, it, it, you know, one thing about, especially for VAR and of course for a lot of these, even replays can be deceiving as well. well. From one angle, it could be looking like he dived. Another angle could be looking he pushed. So, I think Griezmann, pretty much in a way, you know. Uh, I don't think he dived, but maybe he just slipped, but looks like, um, I think he looked, he was out of balance, but at the same time when the Croatian player was, was trying to challenge him, it really looked like he was pushing. So it was a free kick on goal for Mandzukic, and then of course later Perisic with a, with a screamer for goal, which I think really, really uh, kicked off the final. Uh, I really thought it could have been really superb. And I think the decision that really changed the game, that really changed the atmosphere of the game when Griezmann had another penalty uh, for France, uh, I think the Perisic, of course, uh, was the guy who handballed uh, and the VAR decision. As I say, a VAR in the final. We didn't have uh, VAR incidents, I think, in the last few uh, games, especially since the quarterfinals and then the semi final and then third placing. But yesterday it came again, VAR was again used in a very much controversial, which decision I think for Croatian fans will also always look back and thought, you know, that was a time where Croatia really were, you know, defeated. And it, it could have been so much different if they, you know, went to the second half 1-1. Uh, and it really looked like Croatia pretty much controlled the game in the first half, especially after the equaliser. And leading to the equaliser, they were controlling the game. And France would not really have the ball in the first half an hour. Croatia would really, you know, in the possession game. So after that, a decision penalty was given. Penalty. And then you basically knew that, you know, Croatia have to do it again. Have to come, come back from behind every game. But, you know, the belief was there. And then in the second half, Paul Pogba scoring a wonderful goal. Which is not that... I think one thing also which really sums up that Croatia keeper, he's not, I mean, he's the best. I'm not, I'm not sure because of the tiredness, uh, uh, but he should have saved certain things. I mean, the, the Pogba goal, as superb as it was, was not, an, was not a goal that should be, you know, uh, saved uh, or, or unsavable. It's actually a very unsavable goal, if you ask me, for a professional keeper. Even the Griezmann penalty, well, you might say it's a penalty, but anyway, the Mandzukic own goal, you, you might say that, uh, you know, he didn't know Mandzukic was going to hit, but I think it was the French player. If, if it was a French player that's going to hit the ball, I don't think he even could, caught, could even save the ball. So, Subasic, I think, really... Um, really uh, should have at least tried to, you know... Uh, hit the ball at least um, But uh, as I say that um, you know sometimes uh, things happen and um, And of course it, 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 it's pretty much all over for uh, For the chance so uh, then after that Paul Pop was scoring the third goal and Finally Kylian Mbappe 19 year old young tournament this guy made history Pretty much, uh, you know, in the modern times, Pele back in 1958, and then this guy scored the, you know, in 19 years old playing the World Cup final, scoring the goal that was sealing, well, that sold the deal. Pretty much, when when it was 4-1, um, when it was 3-1, it was kind of hard, but when it was 4-1, it was just game over. And we haven't seen. I mean, we we uh, we talked about you know the last three World Cups all going to penalty and um, all going to. Uh, in extra time, uh, in in back in two thousand six, where France lost against Italy, and then uh, in Spain, in in Africa, where Spain won after extra time, and then in the last World Cup in Brazil, where Germany won against Argentina. This time around, it was not going to be. There were going to be four goals, and then the last goal, uh, which was a keeper mistake from Varane. I think nothing but a consolation. But uh, he was lucky enough because France were leading four one. If France were if he was in equalizer or France were, you know, in a 3-2 uh, deficit, he was going to be in trouble. But of course, uh, he was not going to be worried about that, uh, Hugo Lloris. So Mandzukic did have uh, one goal to his name after scoring an own goal and then uh, another goal from the keeper's mistake. 
now we talk about these stats um overall i think uh all right in terms of the golden boot uh harry kane won the golden boot uh, i think luka modric won the goal uh golden uh go ball of the tournament golden ball of the tournament the best he's like the best player and the best young player Kylian Mbappe, fair play won to Spain. You can always in, check in the Wikipedia. Um, and of course, uh, as for champions, France, their second title after 20 years. And of course, their manager, this champs, pretty much becomes the third manager after Beckenbauer and another guy, I forgot, who won it as a player and as a manager. So France football, again, after 20 years of ups and downs, um, I had actually, the, the best thing is, I have actually predicted that France would win it in one of my previous videos, um, which I'll actually put in the link, just actually, just actually, uh, I'm not bragging about it, I, I, I did, everything I predicted was kind of wrong in the semi-final, teams that win the semi-final, only France was there, and France against Germany, and France actually won. Uh, and sorry, I predicted France to win and they actually won. When I remember, I was actually watching the game and I remember, oh my god, I predicted it. So yeah, it was actually a very, you know, coincidence, coincidental prediction. But it's going to be really cool um, to actually see it after. Uh, I predicted it back in May, so it's going to be pretty cool to see it now. Um, so uh, in terms of the stats, I think... Uh, best keeper, of course, is nevertheless, never the, uh, nevertheless it's... Uh, Thibaut Courtois for the Belgian goalkeeper pretty much uh, had a clean sheet and um, well World Cup is over um, champions France I think uh, uh, yes talking about their, their, their a journey uh, when they won in 98 um, they lost in 2002 they pretty much started the champions curse France I'm not sure what's going to happen in four years time but you know if that happens again, surely it's going to be a trend. I mean, after three, after uh, France uh, have fallen a victim, Italy have fallen to a victim, Spain has fallen to a victim, and then Germany. So four teams. I'm not sure if France can break, but in four years' time, a lot of things can change. A lot of lot. We saw what happened to Germany uh, four years ago. Uh, almost the same players are back in it, but you know, we're never going to know. And of course, it's going to be a whole different World Cup next time around. This will be the last, uh, you know, formation as we know it. 32 teams. Um, pretty much think the next World Cup will have 43, 42 teams, if I'm not mistaken. And Qatar in 2022, which is going to be held in November and December. So it's going to be a whole different uh, World Cup. I think that one-off World Cup. And of course, uh, in eight years' time, will be in, in, in Central America, North America. So it's going to be a long journey ahead, uh, I think, for for, for for France and all. So pretty much the World Cup is over. It's been a tremendous World Cup. It's been unpredictable. Uh, if Croatia would have won it, I think it would be much, much more satisfying to see an underdog win because this is the World Cup we will always refer to when Croatia won back in uh, 2018. But um, so far, Russia World Cup has been successful tremendous um enjoyable to watch i think one of my first world cups that i really you know followed to throughout every group stage game uh you know you know my previous world cups were always when i was a little kid and now i'm actually in a teenager so i can actually you know much more know what's going on pretty much um and of course france journey uh, we talked about how they were eliminated in 2002 2006 they were went to the they they lost to in the final Remember the Zidane headbutt? 2010, they went out in the group stage after, you know, team, you know, internal uh, um, managerial problems. And, of course, in 2014, um, they lost to Germany. They lost to the champions, Hummel's goal. And, of course, we remember last two years ago, they, they lost the Euros in their home. So, pretty much, it's a redemption for them uh, since that defeat in two years ago. So, this time around... Uh, pretty much they have conquered the world and of course have put I mean this French side is really young so I'm not sure what's going to happen in four years anything could happen but um, you know in the next uh, statistically on paper they have they could should be uh, one of the best teams in the world after all that all that performance so at the end of the day it's been a great World Cup a really a superb World Cup 
and um, I pretty much think that uh, you know it's kind of sad to see it go to an end but overall I think um, you know it's, it's actually one, one of the best um, and I, I really see that uh, this is actually the best moment um, for the World Cup and overall uh, you know it's actually um, been a fabulous fabulous tournament and I think that's about it I see you in four years time uh, when we talk about the next World Cup all right goodbye